Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Sesso here, we a video here today, bringing you guys an illustrated tutorial on how to create your own cool, we're going to call it like iconic eSport design logos. Uh, reason being is because there's of course more than just a mascot logo to actually create a eSport team design, right? So uh, this right here is more or less uh, kind of revolving around the word icon. Um, you know, it's kind of like a 2D or flat logo as you might uh, re recall it as well if you guys were to type it in Google or something like that to find logos that look like such. Um, but yeah, it's more or less kind of like a bare bones stripped simplistic method of contributing whatever the words that might be in the eSports design team. For me, I made up my own, so I kind of called it Star Wolves, give myself this really easy just cut in to kind of make a really cool logo just really quickly, just kind of literally a three minute logo penciled freely. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those things where sometimes it's the eSport team name that also really counts. So if you're watching this video looking to make your own eSport team yourself um, and you're looking to make a logo for it, if you might have to go back to the drawing board when it comes to the name sometimes, it's so hard sometimes and you can make it so much easier for yourself also in, in, a, in a way, right? Anyway, for this logo here, all I pretty much did was combine three different things, or I would say two different things. Uh, basically a shield itself and then an icon or excuse me, an iconic or a uh, an object in which you can see very, very maybe it's loosely but more or less this is very more like direct so this, you can see like a wolf in the background of the the shield itself kind of housed in this little shield and then star wolves there's no way i'm not gonna put a star in there so put a star in there right but this is more or less this is would be like my concept i would show my my client i'd be like hey this is where my direction i'm going into um i did add excuse me i did add these little uh like little indentions here when it comes to like uh, just cutting that out just to make it look cool make sure this is like nice and even and whatnot but the logo itself is not quite even right now because i just kind of like i said i freehanded it uh and i use a tool for this thing so with that being said uh there's a, plenty of places that i can improve on when it comes to this right here right you might look at this and be like this is perfect it might be perfect who, who the hell knows right but i'm just trying to say there's more you can do because if you take it and like subtract again you have you know right here let's just try again really quickly like you have the shield itself Right, and then you have the uh, the the wolf. will just you know whatever. That's a that's a bird. Um, but then you have the star as well. So if you kind of think about it, this is the hardest part of it all. Jesus Christ. Okay, right. So if you kind of think about it, this is like plus. There's another plus. If you were to think about it, you can go ahead and say this might be good for you. But what if I went in and said, hey, what if I you know change this a little bit, or, or I change uh, the star to make it like have a little indention here to kind of have the cut. Um, or the shield itself, maybe the shield itself is broken in this area here, maybe it can be broken in the area right here, maybe it can be broken in the area right here, you know what I mean? So, what I'm trying to, like, suggest is when you have something like this, and you want to try to elevate it, make revisions based on changing one of the, each individual shapes. So, I'm just trying to give you guys, like, a really cool in, like I said, I made it easier for myself with this little logo here, but I also have some written down, like, if you have Spartan, you have helmets, right? Uh, that's probably used a lot, but, uh... What else do I have there? Oh yeah, tornado, vortex, uh, that's Star Wars. So basically, what I'm saying is like vortex gaming or something like that. You can have like a you know a twister or or some kind of like cool you know just kind of like a spinning just vortex, right? Um, also, when I said tornado as well, you have a tornado. I think there's a tornado gaming already. However, um, but yeah, you see how like very easy it is to pit you know nitpick these things. But when it comes to more of an abstract term, when you come with your esport team itself, maybe it's just as easy as kind of just making a logo concept. Uh, around just like a shape itself i shall show again uh in the, later in this video however i'm just gonna quickly go over now that i'm done talking giving you guys all the little insight quick little four minute insight i think it's very valuable if you guys you know take the time to listen um anyway i'm just gonna quickly just cut over really quickly and show you guys how i'm gonna create or how i created this but i'm just gonna use a lion this time and it's a different shape just to kind of give you guys a really quick like how to kind of how to think through sometimes right so give me a second and i'll just cut right over like it's literally a second for you guys all right, guys, so we're back. So right now I'm going to show you guys how to create a really cool icon mascot design, or I wouldn't say mascot design, but I'm going to icon animal design. Does that make a little more sense for you guys? So more or less not a mascot itself and the creation of the style itself, but more or less like an icon like so. Now, for me, really quickly, I want to show you guys this really cool little technique that I, I guess I can house for you guys to kind of like really kind of pinpoint on what direction you can go when you do it on your own, right? So for here, I kind of like would break it down into three shapes. So I'm going to be using the print screen, little quick little program here, using the pencil to quickly draw. I could draw on Illustrator, but whatever. This is fine, too. Um, so three shapes here. So there's the, the, the shield here as well, right? That's one shape. The second shape would be the wolf itself. That's number two. And the third shape would be the star. So if I quickly just kind of like reference them outside, this is, by the way, what you should be doing in your sketches. So I have my shield here. I have my wolf here. I'll just kind of like, oof, I got to just kind of quickly to kind of like, like, a, you know, that's the nose. 
whatever, right? So, cool, that's the wolf there, and then I have the star as well, right? So this is the hardest part ever in the universe, don't know how to do stars perfectly, but that's a okay star for now. So that's three shapes. So that's kind of how I, got, how I broke it down in my head personally to create this really cool, really quick concept here. By the way, this, this I mentioned again, this is a quick little, literally like a five, 10 minute um, pen tool sketch that I did for the this example here with our made up star wolf name. Um, so with that being said, you can go ahead and go through it now let's say you want to take the star for instance this is there's there's plenty of different ways to make a star right this is still a reference star so you're gonna have the you know you have the the, the simple little kind of like you know star kind of shape going on here the i'm just gonna do the lines for a crisscross or whatnot but if you guys like type in like star logo or a star icon in google to get some references um don't feel don't copy of course i'm just taking references of how stars can also be done in a way of like also not just being bare bones just a simple star shape so what I mean by that is if I were to go over here and I said, hey, I don't want my star to kind of all connect. Maybe I want my star to kind of disconnect here. I would do this perfectly, by the way, but I'm just kind of just showing you guys for a reference wise, right? Maybe you say you want your star to look like that, right? Automatically, you just made a different character or excuse me, you made a different logo because you changed the character of how the star is represented. So if I say, okay, I don't want that there. Yeah, I'm going to want this right here cut out as well. You know, I want to want this just cut out right there as well. So I'm going to cut this out just like so. Now my star looks completely different again, right? So that gives me a different, you know, look to it, right? You might say, holy crap, it looked really good then. But with this revisions and different, like, steps that I'm taking to make it look even cooler, it's looking kind of cool, right? What if the, the you know, that kind of looks, it's pointing down. I would kind of make this point up. So I would kind of reverse that, cut it a different way. Because, you know, you know, mindset, branding-wise, you want to make sure you have the best looking thing. You don't want to have anyone be like, when they lose, be like, oh, dude, they're going downhill. <laughs> suck ass but um basically this is what i'm trying to mean right this is what i mean i broke it down into those three shapes the shield the wolf the star <clears throat> and you can take uh take each one of those shapes and then create something really cool and different and just kind of like just just of course enhance it make it uh, better uh for like the wolf itself maybe the wolf i want to kind of make a shooting star reference so maybe if this star wasn't here and i wanted to say it you know it's it's wolf's us uh, it's star wolves esports or star wolves gaming is my made-up name that i created for the, the concept of the video here today um what if i said i don't want to make a i don't want to make the star being so obvious so imagine the star was actually filled in it was just the shape going fully down this way and let's say if i wanted to make a reference of a galaxy or or shooting stars you can do really cool maybe this will have to be finesse a little bit more but you can do some really cool like indentions going in this way to kind of create different you know motions and and a shooting star reference right i'm just kind of give you guys ideas of how to go about this name here but i want to now go over the fact of how i create a really cool logo um with the name i'm gonna make up another made up name uh superior lion esports or superior lion uh, superior lion gaming so with that name automatically what you should be doing is detaching the superior detaching uh, lion and then you can even detach gaming as well uh, what I would do is I would say when it comes to superior what does that word you should study as well so it's type in the word if you don't know what the word superior means if whatever go on Google go to Google definitions you'll find it like royalty so then hey royalty what are royalty colors what are royalty objects what is royalty materialistically wise right and um, automatically I think crown so I can say lion crown sheep would be my go-to kind of revision concept that I would go for. So hopefully that kind of gives you guys a really cool idea because there's, there's, that's something he's going to try to do really quickly. It's like a little quick little pencil sketch as well again, but that's how you should be like, be able to think it through. So this is why logo designing takes so long is because there's a lot of studying involved as well than just really just going into it and saying, Hey, screw it. But now when you have this kind of foundation and method and steps, it looks kind of like a little bit easier, right? So I'm going to quickly cut over to a really quick tip that I kind of want to just show you guys really quickly because it's honestly probably gonna change your thought process a lot and I think it's gonna be pretty cool to actually know so I'm gonna just quickly cut over to that and uh, yeah one second all right I, I totally totally just lied to you guys I'm actually just gonna do it when I do the reference of actually doing a letter concept really quickly at the end of the video because it's kind of like really quick and a really cool just kind of method of, of doing that as well so I'm gonna kind of separate that in the video really quickly so I'm not gonna do the tip now but we'll do it in the video guaranteed anyway I'm gonna quickly go over that lion superior gaming thing so I have a lion sketch already in here and I also already have a preview of how I kind of want to house this. So this is a very, these are like honestly pen tool sketches. They're not perfect. This is a pencil sketch as well, but it came out pretty good because I made the lines fairly sharp and easy. But when it comes to lions, I always feel like little spike kind of like hair references are kind of like a go-to. So that'd be something I have to revise. But let me quickly show you guys how I went about that doing uh, this little cool little, you know, masking sort of lion shape, this little icon mind shape that would look really good in the shape here, right? That fucking, that, sorry, prompts. Well, won't be that hard to follow, hopefully, right? 
Anyway, so if I just take this little profile, by the way, for this icon here, for the uh, the wolf that I chose here, I typed in in Google wolf profile. Here I typed in lion profile and I got this image here. My parents from Sutterstock. I just kept that in because I just took the image itself, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just reference some of these lines here. So what you guys should be looking at, I'm gonna quickly zoom out a little bit more. What you guys should be looking at here are basically what are the lines that are going on, right? So you have this line here, you have a curve here. So you have one dip, right? You have a little bit of dip here. You have a dip right here. You have something going in this way. That's another dip, another dip here, you know, right here, right? And then another dip here. And then you probably want to come, come down here, right? So you have like one, two, three, four, five, six little dips that are going on here. So realistically, what I would do is I would try to minimize that, make it as simplistic as possible and have the animal be seen in the less amount of, I guess, curves or cuts as possible. So if I were to go for it, you guys already saw how I already did it, right? Because I would start here, go here, I'll make a little bit of curve for the top of his head. And then for his nose bridge here, I'm going to say I'm going to make a cut, just straight cut down right like this, right? And I'm going to close this path for a second. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to make this entire thing, except for going up, down, up, down, pencil this entire thing. Click here. And I'm just going to drag and make this entire one shape. Okay. So this little reference shape here is a little bit off the books, but whatever. Um, and I'm going to say right here, I'm going to do a nice little dip right here. Actually, let's go right here, right to the bottom of his chin. I'm going to close this path for a second so you can see the, the actual pathing, right? And I'm going to say this little indention part, you see how it gets a little empty here because it's kind of like how, you know, if you look at your style profile, there's an emptiness right here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to follow his jawline, which is right here and just go just like so in, inward that way. And I'll come back out, back to his chest. I'm going to bring this curve here more towards the inside because that kind of like makes it look like it's puffing out his chest, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and just cut in this way here. And I'm going to just screw that. I'm going to leave this path right here for a second. And I'm going to cut over it over here and kind of start on the top again. So kind of face is done right here. So I'm going to go do it now is kind of how I did this here. So this is more or less the little spiky stuff is kind of how it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of do just pen tool off the bat. I probably could have thought about it before, but that'd be a, a little more work for me. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say, all right, I'm going to cut down this way, all right? I want to reference how I did this here. It's kind of cool. I kind of made this kind of like a point, right? Something like that. All right. And then I started going downwards. So I'm going to go like this. I see this one here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of like literally kind of trace over it for now. Um, just because I'm not, I don't have a sketch, I'm just going to quickly just go through this really quick like so and kind of just pick and choose and I'll say that's fine. That's enough for the, for the idea. That's pretty much fine. I'm going to fill this in with a color, get rid of this one here and we'll use this. This is not actually that bad, but it, it'll do the, it'll do its job for now. What I'm trying to explain, right? So for this part here, I ended up putting a little eye in there and this for a little, this little eye here. I can just say, I don't like how this is anymore. I'm going to quickly go ahead and take my pen tool. Get rid of that and make it flat line like so. And I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this point right here. And I'm just going to make the eye. I used to do this with my mascot tutorials um, in the past before I actually learned how to make eyes. It's kind of how I just kind of click, make it like a scope. So you kind of go from uh, tight, tight from tight two points here to a more of a wide. So you start off, you know, skinny and you go kind of go wider, wider, wider. It's kind of how you reference like a little eye canvas or an eye cutout. Kind of cool little way to do that. Then you can just cut it out like so. If I zoom out the scale wise, if it's not good, of course you have to fix it. But for the video itself, I'm not too worried about what the eye looks like right now. I'm just trying to get the point across. But yeah, even the eye right now looks like it's too far up is what I would say. So it need to be more over this way. I kind of really quickly want to try that. Just like it should be more like this. You know what I mean? Uh, yikes. You know what? We'll just kind of like put an eye in there for now like this. How about we just do that? Right, we'll do like this and then something like that. I could have thought about this way long ago, but you know, I'm just trying to give you guys an idea. I'll just cut the eye like that for now. We're just gonna go with it, right? So we have our line. That's our first shape that I was referring to when it comes to the, the star, the, the wolf and the shield. We're gonna go, hey, this is our shape here. We're also just gonna say, this is an ugly looking line. Let's just, ta-da, okay, right? I'm gonna take a shape from here. This is gonna be used as a reference a little bit later on the video as well, but I'm gonna take this shape for now I would say, hey, this is going to be the shape that I'm going to be using. I'm going to make this shape a little bit bigger. Okay. And also I'm going to have the shapes AI that I have in this video right now in the description for you guys to download if you guys want to use these as well. Um, I'm going to click the shape here. I'm going to turn off the, the fill path and I'm going to turn on the stroke path. And on the stroke path here, I'm going to use a line stroke inner. And I'm going to hold shift to give me the 10 intervals points while I click each time. As you can see, it goes 30, 40, 50. And I would say this is pretty good right here for now. Right. So I'm going to take this shape here now. This line shape that I have, I'll bring it above the shape you can see over it. And I'm gonna put it inside here. Okay, and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. 
and this is where a little bit of a finessing would need to happen. So in the sketch that you might have, you might obviously need to notice that this needs to be a little further up here for the what I current, currently kind of want. And this is to be a little cur like a little further out there. Well, I don't know if it really can, honestly. I have to make it a little more, make it a little more bigger. There we go, something like that. It's got to fit like this. So the reason why I made it come outside of the shape itself and make sure this comes out as well, right, is because I'm going to cut the line out with the shape itself. So I'm going, to be, I'm going to use a lot of the shape builder tool, which happens to be this tool right here, right? So I ended up putting a grid, right? So I got to get rid of that. It's over here. Move. Click. Turn off. Leave me. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I highlight... <clears throat> Excuse me, you can either select or you can highlight by dragging right over these two. So if I press Shift M on my keyboard, it gives me the Shape Builder tool. I can hold Alt and I'll get rid of that. So now my, my lion shape now follows this shape here. So before I do anything else, I want to make my path. Right now, it's currently a path, as you know, right? This this is turned on here, so it makes a stroke. It's a path, more or less, uh, right? And obviously, everything is a path. As I mean, this is a stroke that you can't really cut things out. Because if I try to cut things out right now, let's just use, let's turn this off for a second. Let's say I wanted to cut this out. It's going to follow... Let's just say right here. Why not? Right? If I try to cut this out right here, it's going to follow the line as well and make another stroke. So it has to be turning into a fill. That way it acts more like an object when you cut things out. So what I want to end up doing is I want to click on this shape right here. Right? Go to Object, Expand Appearance. Once it expands Appearance, then I can cut things out the way I would want to without having a stroke appear with my new cutout. Right? So with that being said, I would like to go in here and kind of say I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of this. Kind of have that work a little bit more freely. And by the way, this is called, this is our made up name is Superior Lyman, uh, Superior Lyman, Lion Gaming, right? So now I want to say, I want to cut this out here. So the way I actually ended up doing that for this right here, making sure it's as perfect as possible, having that consistency of spacing, by the way, is very important. So I'm going to take my shape here. I'm going to make a duplicate of it by holding Alt, dragging it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, turn off the uh, fill here, turn on the stroke. I'll make a different color for you guys so you can see it. Turn on your uh, stroke options. You can do that over here as well on, on your windows if you don't have it, right? And then go to align stroke, go to the outside this time. I'm gonna hold shift again. I'm gonna click like three times. So that will give me 30. I would say 20 actually looks pretty good. 20 points, you can do one by one. If you don't have to hold shift, by the way, I just end up doing it a lot because I ended up having to use that about that amount of width. Um, so now here, by the way, same thing. I have to make sure this is uh, more a fill, not a stroke right now because we can't really cut it out as easily. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go object, expand appearance. Now it's a nice little fill. I can click on the shape and the stroke now, right? And then I'm going to shift M on the keyboard, hold alt. This is the shape builder tool, by the way. Hold alt, that gets rid of. So clicking anything just makes it a plus. It just basically adds the shape itself, but cuts it out with these lines here. With holding alt, erases it. So if I click, right, get rid of that. I'll take my blue line here, delete it. And now it's cut out perfectly how it would should be, I guess you would say, if you wanted to have it look like that. So with that being said, that's kind of like how our little, our little shape is going on now. Um, so superior, right? I said crown. So basically what I would try to do is I would reference this line here by the way, everything will have to be perfect. Everything will have to be uh, vectored properly. Maybe you have to use a lot of circles, a lot more strokes, may have to save a path of this, um, the shield here without actually being, you know, edited. So you have to have that, you know, redone over again, but I'm going to quickly kind of just like say for this little part here, I'm going to make it look something like this. And then it's going to do a swirly here and it's going to come up here or whatnot. Right. We'll just do that. And I'm gonna quickly just make my my life a little bit more easier. Just duplicate this over. It's not gonna be per this is not in the middle actually, so I'm gonna have to also squeeze it over as well. But this is just for just reference, right? So I'm gonna put a crown here. Combine these shapes. By the way, the Pathfinder you can use the Combine Shape option or Unite, excuse me, it's called. Right? I'm gonna quickly just move that over here and call that perfect. <laughs> right now, for now, right? So now, if we look at it, we kind of have a really cool concept being created. What I'd probably do as well is I would kind of like you know. Maybe reference this cutout here as well for the lion off the crown. Kind of give it a little cool look as well. And then maybe put like a gem in here as well if you guys want to. But I, like I said, this is me sketching with my pen tool. So I'm just going to give you guys ideas. But you can see what's being formulated or, or what's being formed with the idea that we had just from the name itself. And kind of how we broke it down with the three shapes. So what it comes next is you can move, you can change the lion out. You can change how the shape works. You can change how the crown looks. You can change maybe what you don't want to use a crown maybe you have a different uh, thought when you when you think of royalty right so i'm just trying to give you guys the clearest vision that i possibly can when it comes to creating your own icon that revolves around an uh, animal right whether your name comes with it in your esport team or you just want to do it just for the hell of it because you like that animal uh, or if it was like sneaky 
sneaky sports, sneaky sports, <laughs> all right? And it's like a raccoon. You want to use a raccoon because they're sneaky as hell, like Sly Fox. Um, what What is that game called? I have no idea. I, I don't know why the word Sly, Sly Fox came to my mind. Anyway, right? Like, you know, raccoon, just Sly, what is that shit called? Isn't it called Sly Fox? Whatever. We'll, we'll skip. It was like a PS2 game. Um. Anyway, right? So hopefully that really gives you guys a really cool idea of how I how I basically thought it out and broke it down for you guys. Um, Color matters too. So when it comes to like royalty, you might use some purples. You might use some blues to get that, you know, that royalty feel in there. You might use some gold as well. So I'm going to go like to the yellow orangey, right? Kind of get a gold in there. And you got like royalty right now. Can you not reference? Can you not see a little bit further now? Rather than having the the unfortunate like just panic attack of how you go about actually creating the logo itself, but hopefully you guys understand that part. I'm gonna move over to a really quick little uh, tip that's gonna really help you guys with logos when it comes to like uh, icons or letter concepts and whatnot. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video so far, and I'm gonna quickly cut over and uh, yeah, let's just do this thing right now. All right, guys. So last tip for the video here is basically how to create some letter concepts and a really cool tip that I would love to illustrate to you guys that if you're still struggling, I guess in the sketching process and or basically even the uh, initial starting process of creating a letter concept or a logo or whatever um a letter logo concept there we go um it's actually a lot more easier if you think about it so i'm gonna use my shields ai for an example here so it's not only for freaking uh, animal icons i'm gonna show you guys in a way that a whole i'm gonna give you one clear sentence right i'm gonna be like okay for your letter concept what if you didn't have to work in your brain as a blank canvas and what i would like to suggest is the fact that if you actually use the shape itself right in order to house and create another canvas in a way and create that canvas is in a way that that's how you create a direct focus that's the worst way all i'm basically trying to say is for this shield here these little black shields that you see here what if you chose these as the way your canvas is created in your brain like what if this is your canvas and you can only work in these shapes i wouldn't say these individual shapes alone solely however just shapes in general right is how i'm trying to or like what i try to mean right so if i just say hey look at this concept right here this is nothing but m logos this is literally the shape here is quite literally oh i forgot to combine these shapes anyway right this shape here is quite literally uh how a lot of m logos are looked at so if i were to go over here really quickly I typed in M logo on Google. You can see our shape is referenced right here. That same shape that we were just talking about, it's referenced. So it's that, you know, that this is like this. That's one shape that that person was working with in their brain. This person worked with a circle in their brain. Um, this person worked with a triangle actually, right? This guy, this guy obviously worked more or less like a triangle, right? So the thing is, a lot of the times what you guys are missing is the fact of the initial thought process is sometimes and most times, a lot of the times, majority of the times, there's always a shape that can be hidden or seen. This is more or less, this is probably like, uh, let's just say this one right here is also pretty cool as well. Um, this one right here has more or less a shape that goes like this. And then another shape that's the same exact thing, but shorter on the outside. So there's overlapping shapes in order to create a concept. So all I'm trying to say basically is for you guys is when creating a logo itself, sometimes it's as easy as housing a shape and having a shape for you guys to kind of like go for and reference off of before you even start really sketching. So I'm just, I'm giving you guys the clear in. There's no secret. It's just one of those things that sometimes people overlook because they look at the logo as a whole rather than the process of it sometimes. And that's why it's so important sometimes to watch speed arts or, or watch somehow some, how someone else might do something. So it makes you think differently. This is what I'm trying to refer to. So for this concept here, I have this little shape down here, by the way, so I can uh, kind of create a quick little logo here. So for this concept here, uh, I, I believe I said in the beginning of the video, but I was housing the fact that there's uh, uses of, I have it written down, um, symmetry, shape, and consistency is like the three things I would like to reference the fact of how to create logos um, of many, right? There's just many other ways where I'm just saying it. I like to kind of keep in mind uh, either symmetry, shape. Um, what I mean by shape is like, you know, kind of like shape of these little shapes here. So, you know, choosing shapes like this as a canvas to kind of work on or consistency. What do they mean by that is like consistent cutouts. Um, you know, like I did for the star here, like these are all consistent cutouts. So there's consistency of that, like that, you know what I mean? So that's what I was trying to refer to. Um, but for here, I'm going to work on the, the, the object of symmetry here. So I'm going to use the term symmetry here. So I'm going to use, um, for this logo here, I thought in my head gem gaming. So this shape here is actually a really good shape for me to go by because it looks like a gem, right? And it's kind of a little six side polygon, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I was going to quickly make a quick little logo off of this. So I'm going to just simply just use simple little connect the dots kind of thing. So hopefully this has, it does have point on. It might not be perfect, but I'm just going to quickly go for it for you guys. I'm going to quickly, it should be 300 uh, degree angle turn. So if we'll go 15, then 300, and then go like so. I can simply just duplicate this or flip this over with the replication vertical. We'll take this. We'll make sure this is on this point here. 
it's a little off but that's okay and i'll take this one here make sure this is on this point here and then we'll just kind of shape build this tool here so it looks like that shape build tool hold alt delete there and i'm gonna take this shape here i might have to move this a little more further up right and then move this here uh, not the best idea slash concept slash execution, but it'll work for the video here today, right? Really quick, right? So, oh, nope, forgot this. This needs to be like so. Cut out there. So we have our little G here. So this is our, our first part of it. So I'm going to click and just quickly just connect all these really quick and then just duplicate it over, right? So you just see the process of me just using a shape as we had. Just like, so you can't really quite see it. So what I might have to do is I'm gonna say, hey, let's split it in half once again. But then this is what I should have thought of before, but I'm just using this as a quick little cheat sheet, I guess you would say. So I'm gonna select these two shapes, select the shape here, but I, ha I would have to fix this a little bit because obviously then this is off. So then I have to like, you know, of course make it a little more better, but for the for the sake of the video, this is perfectly fine. So right, this is, oop, this is gem gaming, right? So we have GG as this, right? So, so for this, imagine like kind of looking at this as a whole and be like, Holy crap, how did this guy think about this? It looks like a gem. Oh my god, why does it look like a gem? And some people really honestly forget the fact that it's just reference off of shapes. So all I'm trying to say in this part of the video is I have a bunch of tutorials on logo designs themselves. And honestly, this is one of the more or less just quick little tips and I guess quick little um, gist of kind of like how people kind of see things in order to actually create things. So all I'm trying to say for this part of the video here is sometimes the easiest part is working with a canvas within a shape. And not having it work like imagine like seeing this like imagine can you see a t in this logo probably can you see an r in this logo probably can you see an m in this logo probably oh excuse me i, I meant to say logo i meant to say shape right can you see an m in the shape probably can you see a v in the shape probably can you see a g in the shape probably right but imagine if you had all this turned off like what do you honestly see now honestly so sometimes it's a little bit more difficult for you to understand it and or learn it and or create it if you're especially if you're new in like the world of graphic design and or logo design so i'm just trying to give you guys a really quick little tip and honestly hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today i hopefully i, I just personally for me i just think it was pretty good um i apologize for all like the light changes i ended up recording this video while the sun was going down so just gradually getting shittier shittier uh camera quality i don't have any like you know pretty lights in my room at the moment um but yeah Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial here today. There is no secret download, but I would love a you know tune likes on the video. Um, and the shields are gonna be the secret download basically, so it's gonna have a nice little PSD for you guys to actually. Uh, excuse me, AI file for you guys to actually go ahead and use some shields. Um, maybe for the secret download, I'll add some more of them. But these are for already in the video already for you guys, or in the description already for you guys. So. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at SiswayHQ. Don't forget to check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SiswayHQ for any pre-mades and packages of those $3. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to me if you guys haven't already. I mean, if, if you guys love this video, you'll probably love a lot more of these other ones in the future, just saying. Um, and as well as comment down anything you're going to see me do below, just maybe like, hey, so, so I love how this person did this. And maybe you want to go on Twitter and link it and be like, yo, I'd link to you a cool tutorial idea. And I would love that. I appreciate that very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy you guys this weekend. Enjoy you guys this next week and next year, whatever the hell. Next time you ever see me again, whatever. Anyway, love you guys. Uh, don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. So switch you out. Peace. My head looks shiny because of the lights. All these different lights. It looks like I'm sweating. <laughs> lights.